All right, hello, welcome everybody. This will be our final video in our series on chapter 21 in the uh, statistics modeling our world curriculum. Uh, in this video, we are going to uh, take a look at type 1 and type 2 errors. So we've discussed what we do in a hypothesis test, how it works, we've discussed the conclusions, what p-values are, what an alpha level is. Um, we need to talk about when hypothesis tests go wrong. Um, so, shocking news, nobody's perfect, right? Uh, even with a lot of evidence, sometimes we make the wrong decision. Um, and so when I say making errors here, I'm not meaning we've made an error somehow in the calculations. What I'm meaning is that the evidence, the p-value, um, has led us to an incorrect conclusion. So uh, when we perform a hypothesis, we can make a mistake in two ways. Or the, I should say the evidence can lead us to a mistake in two ways. The first would be that the null hypothesis is true, but we mistakenly reject it. So this would be if uh, we had a situation where, um, our P -val where, where we set an alpha of 0.05, and uh, the p-value we ended up getting was 0 0.001 or something like that. So this leads us to believe that we should reject. However, um, as it turns out, the actual truth is that we should not have rejected. Uh, this is called a type 1 error. When we reject the null hypothesis, but it is actually a true statement. Uh, and you'll have to forgive my handwriting here. I, this is my first video making uh, using one, a new Wacom tablet that I just got. Uh, so I'm, I'm learning how to do all of this. Uh, but the null hypothesis is actually true and we rejected it because what we actually saw was really just a very rare event. Um, and so we made a type 1 error. That is one possibility of an error that we can make. Uh, we reject the null hypothesis. Uh, but we should have, uh, but we shouldn't have, because it was true. The other type of mistake we can make is that the null hypothesis is false, but we fail to reject it. So, uh, sort of the opposite of a type 1 error, a type 2 error would suggest that uh, we had an alpha value of 0 0.05, and our p-value uh, was point uh, zero seven three uh, a p-value that is larger than my alpha level would lead me to fail to reject the null hypothesis however the reality is the truth is that this null hypothesis is actually false this is a type 2 error uh, where we have failed to reduce to reject the null hypothesis even though uh, the null hypothesis is actually false. Uh, so we witnessed a very rare event in the other direction where um, it actually shows that it was true. Uh, now, different types of errors here can have different types of consequences. Uh, the type of error that uh, is more serious really depends on the situation at hand. The gravity of that error, the consequences of that error, is dependent on the context. And so we'll look at a couple, two different, we'll look at two examples here in a moment um, of what the different consequences can be uh, when we do make a type 1 or a type 2 error. Uh, however, before we look at that, I just want to show you this illustration of um, the four possibilities when we run a hypothesis test. So uh, the way that this, that this table is set up, uh, this vertical columns are representing the truth. So this column here is that the null hypothesis is true. And this column here is that the null hypothesis is false. Now, the rows along the side are what the uh, evidence has led us to uh, do with the hypothesis test. So this column is that we rejected the null hypothesis, and this row is that we retained or we failed to reject the null hypothesis. So notice that this box right here, 
the box that says that we rejected the null hypothesis even though it was true that's a type 1 error if we reject the null hypothesis when it's actually false that's okay that's exactly what we want right we had a false null hypothesis and we rejected it that's fantastic that's what we want in this row if we fail to reject a true null hypothesis again that's perfect that's exactly what we want when the null hypothesis is true we we really are hoping that our evidence leads us to that conclusion however when we fail to reject a null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually false that is a type 2 error and we want to avoid those situations when possible so let's look at two examples here to talk about the consequences of type 1 and type 2 errors um, oh no I'm sorry before we do that I want there's a couple things I want to talk about in terms of how often they are excuse me um, so how often does a type 1 error occur well a type 1 error occurs uh, when uh, we reject a true null hypothesis um, so that means that the type 1 error is actually our alpha level uh, since the alpha level is giving us that threshold for when we're going to reject the null hypothesis, uh, say it's 0 0.05, that means that we have a 5% probability of a type 1 error occurring. Uh, so we can reduce the probability of type 1 error by lowering our alpha value. And if we have a higher alpha value, uh, we are increasing the probability that we will make a type type 1 error. Again, remember, type 1 error means we're rejecting the null hypo hypothesis when uh, we should not have rejected the null hypothesis. So if we increase our alpha level, we are less likely to reject our null hypothesis. When the null hypothesis is false and we reject it, we have done the right thing. So this ability to detect a false hypothesis is called the power of the test and uh, we're gonna go into the issue of power later uh, so we won't really talk about it right now but that's just sort of base vocabulary right the test ability to detect a false hypothesis is called the power of the test now and when an all hypothesis is false and we fail to reject it we've made a type 2 error uh, the letter we use to represent this probability is the beta, uh, which is actually very difficult to assess what this beta value actually is. Um, in fact, most times you won't even have a, a hard value of what the beta is, because in order to determine that, we need to know the value of the parameter, right? Like the actual population uh, value, which we won't really, we won't really know. Um, which means that there really isn't a single value for this beta. Uh, there's a different beta for every different parameter value, and we can hypothesize what these are, but we don't actually know them. Uh, so we can make it a little bit easier to look at a particular beta by talking about the effect size, which basically asks us how big of a difference matters. Um, this beta value can be reduced by increasing the alpha, but when we increase the alpha, we increase the probability of making a type 1 error, but we decrease the probability of making a type 2 error. So there is a push and pull on, the, uh, on how often we will make type 1 and type 2 errors. Um, generally speaking, like for the AP test, the, the kind of things that you need to know, you're never going to calculate a beta value. Um, but there are questions that will ask you about this push and pull and how it relates to power. And like I said, we're going to talk about power um, on a, in a different video. Um, but for now, things to know is that the alpha value is your probability of making a type 1 error. The beta value is the probability of making a type 2 error. And if we increase alpha, we decrease beta. And when we increase beta, we decrease alpha. So there's a push and pull relationship. 
the only way that you can actually reduce both types of errors is to just collect more data, uh, meaning we need a larger sample size. A larger sample size will always reduce both types of error um, at the same time. All right, let's look at an actual example here. Um, a published study found the risk of heart attack to be increased in patients taking the diabetes drug Avandia. The issue of the New England Journal of Medicine in which that study uh, appeared also included an editorial that said, in part, a few events either way might have changed the findings for myocardial infarction or for death from cardiovascular causes. In this setting, the possibility that the findings were due to chance cannot be excluded. So looking at this situation, what kind of error would the researchers have made if in fact their findings were due to chance? What could be the consequences of this error? So anytime we're dealing with uh, a question that has to do with uh, a type 1 or a type 2 error, it's really important that you um, identify what the possible null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis would have been. Um, because if you can identify what those things are, it really helps bring the uh, the, the context of the situation uh, into a much cl more clear picture. Um, so let's read this first sentence again, just this first stuff up here, and see if we can identify what the null hypothesis would be. So a published study found the risk of heart attack to be increased in patients taking the diabetes drug Avandia. Okay, so um, I noticed that it says that there is an increase, the drug has increased patients taking uh, a heart risk of heart attack. That tells me that the alternative hypothesis is that um, some kind of increase happened. The proportion of people uh, increased. Now, this value over here, we won't, we don't know. Um, so you can just kind of pretend there's a number there. We don't really need a number to help identify the, the hypothesis. Um, so what that means is that our null hypothesis is that it was equal to some number. Now, it says that the study found the risk of heart attack to be increased. It found this. It found the, the alternative hypothesis. So in terms of the statistics we've been talking about, does it mean that they rejected the null hypothesis or that they failed to reject? Now, if it says that it found that they increased, it means that this study rejected the null hypothesis. Okay, Because it says that the study found the risk of heart attack to be increased in patients. It found the, the alternative hypothesis. It means that they rejected the null hypothesis. So, if they made an error when they rejected the null hypothesis, what type of error is it? And if you are thinking type 1 error, you are correct, right? This is a type 1 error situation. They rejected the null hypothesis when they should not have, right? If it's due to chance, that means that they should not have rejected the null hypothesis. So that answers the first part of this question. This is a type 1 error. Now, what could be the consequences of such an error? Well, it says that a published study found the risk of heart attack to be increased in patients taking the diabetes drug in of Andia. Um, if there was an increased risk of heart attack, um, they found, if the study found that, it means that the result of the study probably means that they canceled the drug, right? Uh, result of this study probably means they canceled the drug. And I don't know where that C came from. This Wacom tablet is a weird thing for me to learn. <laughs> Sorry. It uh, means the drug got canceled. Um, so if the result of the study means that the drug got canceled, but it shouldn't have actually been canceled, the consequences of this error means... A, uh, a working drug didn't go to market. 
a working drug did not get sold. Um, which means that there may be lots of people who uh, could not take Avandia to, take, to, to fix their diabetes. Suddenly we have a working diabetes drug that got canceled because we made a type 1 error. So how dire of a consequence is this? Well, you know, I maybe I don't know if it means that anybody's going to die from it, but it does mean that there are people who could have been uh, maybe improving the quality of their lives, uh, but because of the random chance we got in the uh, the study, those people are having those, that opportunity taken away. So type one errors can definitely have consequences that um, we, we not, can't necessarily predict. Okay, So there's one example. Let's look at one more and then we'll be done with this video for the day. Um, a clean air standard requires that vehicle exhaust emissions exceed specified limits for various pollutants. Many states require that cars be tested annually to be sure that they meet these standards. Suppose state regulators double check a random sample of cars that suspect a repair shop has certified as okay. They will revoke the shop's license if they find significant evidence that the shop is certifying vehicles that do not meet the standard. So these are the four questions that we want to answer uh, in this particular question. I'm writing them all down because it is uh, much easier for me to <laughs> write them if I do it this way. So in this context, what is a type 1 error? Well, okay, before we determine any of those things, we need to think about what the null and alternative hypothesis are. Now again, they don't give us any specifics about proportions. However, we can take a guess at some things. Um, so they're talking about uh, the regulators double checking a random sample of cars that they suspect a repair shop has certified okay. So we have a, uh, a proportion of cars that they're going to be checking. Uh, I'm just gonna make up a number, right? Mm, 70 percent, right? They're saying that seventy percent of their cars are okay, right? Uh, the alternative hypothesis, then, they're gonna revoke the license if they find significant evidence that the shop is certifying vehicles that don't meet the standards. So, it means that they would be making more cards they'd have a higher proportion of cards that are not meeting the standards again made up number so now that we have an idea of what the alternative hypothesis the, the hypotheses are let's talk about the errors type 1 error is when we reject the null hypothesis uh, when we shouldn't so in this context, a type 1 error would be um, that we, uh, so the researchers found evidence that, uh, that unhealthy cars, I don't know why I used the word unhealthy, unhealthy cars, cars that weren't passing their emissions test were being passed. So the researchers found that, uh, that, that there were cars being passed when they shouldn't have. When the truth is that they were not making car, certifying cars as okay, the researchers found that they did. So that's a type 1 error in this context. A type 2 error would mean that they failed to reject it when they shouldn't. And that means that researchers found that um, the shop was not certifying cars that shouldn't have been. Car certifying cars they shouldn't have. And I'm gonna run out of room. Oh, I got it right there. Nah. Um, so in a type 2 error, they are researchers finding that the shop was not certifying cars that they shouldn't have. Um, P equals 0 0.70 when 
the shop was. Uh, certifying those cars. So this is a this is an error where the shop was actually doing something illegal, but the researchers didn't find it. So part C here says, what type of the error would the shops the shops owners consider more serious? Well, the shop owners are going to find a type one error to be more serious because that means they're going to get their license pulled. Okay, the researchers found evidence that unhealthy cars were being passed, even though they weren't. So they're going to get their license pulled, even though they're following the law, if a type 1 error occurs. Now, part D, what type of the error would the environmentalists consider to be more serious? Well, the environmentalists are going to consider a type 2 error to be more serious, because this means that a legit shop, a shop that, um, um, excuse me, this means that uh, the shop that is letting unhealthy cars go through didn't have any evidence that they got caught. So environmentalists wouldn't like that because here now we have a, a shop whose uh, standards are not high enough and they're okaying cars that are hurting the environment uh, and the researchers didn't find evidence in that. So we'll call that an end to this video. Uh, if you've got questions, comments, concerns, want more examples, you can go ahead and throw those things into the comments. Uh, otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and uh, we will see you again, hopefully. Goodbye.